Last year, I got this tattoo of an Archaeopteryx on my arm. I mean, what could be a better tattoo of a dinosaur than the creature that fundamentally shaped how we view dinosaurs and birds today? I went to the bar with the tattoo artist the next night, and the bartender asked me if this was a tattoo of a bird on my arm. I decided, well, I, birds are dinosaurs, dinosaurs are birds, and spared her of this long-winded rant about the link between dinosaurs and birds. And although she was spared, Mentally, I wasn't. I could have done so much more and it just over explained it to her. But then I realized that I didn't have that knowledge. I needed more. I needed to know more. That's not sufficient. Heck and I pondered the endless tomes of the internet. Can we really condense hundreds of millions of years into a barely pronounceable Greek framework? Well, we fall victim to these human fallacies to answer these questions for you. What is the definition of a dinosaur? What was the evolution of birds? And where does Archaeopteryx fall into it? What is the difference between avian and non-avian dinosaurs? Did birds come from non-avian dinosaurs? And are some birds more dinosaurs than others? If you're as passionate about this subject as me, you're probably a dinosaur nerd. Join the Dino Nerd Club Discord server. If you want your idea to become a video, share your art, or chat with other like-minded people, the link is in the description and comments section. Help us get to 1,000 members. We're almost there, and our 1,000th member will get a special tag on the server. We start our journey by answering a simple question, what is a dinosaur? I think it's good to start on the same page from the beginning. Archosaurs evolved into two things. Ava Metatarsalia, being all the dinosaurs we know and love plus pterosaurs, and Pseudosuchia, which includes crocodilians. That is to say, dinosaurs and crocodilians share a common ancestor in the archosaurs. This distinction happened in the Triassic period some 237 million years ago, give or take the entire span of human evolution. Ava Metatarsalia split into Ornithodira, in which pterosaurs and dinosaurs split off from each other. Thus, Dinosauria was born. The evolution of birds was not a simple thing. It happened over millions of years, and the dinosaur lineage kept throwing new adaptations at the wall to see what stuck. It was in the Triassic period that dinosaurs evolved bipedal posture, as well as simple filamentous feathers. Also in the Triassic period was the distinction between Ornithischian, or bird hip dinosaurs, and Saurischian, or lizard hip dinosaurs. Silosauridae were some of the earliest Ornithischian dinosaurs, while Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus were some of the earliest Saurischian dinosaurs. But don't let this fool you. Our journey to the modern bird actually follows the lizard hip Saurischian arc. As it turns out, these names were made before the link between dinosaurs and birds was fully understood, and it seems that evolution evolution pushes dinosaurs from both families towards bird hips in the end. The Triassic period ended with the first mass extinction event our dinosaurs had to endure, and the diversification of fauna exploded. In the Jurassic, theropoda resulted in many of the dinosaurs we know and love today. Allosaurids, Megalosaurids, Ceratosaurids, and more. It was in theropoda that the first furculas, or wishbones, developed. It's fun to imagine snapping an allosaurus-sized wishbone. Theropoda also gave rise to the Silurosaurs, our group of interest today. The Silurosaurs included Comsognathids, Tyrannosaurs, Ornithomimosaurs, and Manoraptorans. The Manoraptorans decided to develop veined feathers, which provide aerodynamics, heat retention, pretty mating displays, hydrophobia, and more. Manoraptorans included Oviraptorids and Paravis, the first dinosaurs to have wings. Now we're getting somewhere. Dromaeosaurids, Troodontidae, and the clade Aviali all possessed this new feature. Dromaeosaurids and Truodontidae may have used these wings to make quick turns while hunting or to help soften a fall, but it was the Aviali that began to look towards the sky in the late Jurassic, that scientists deemed to be the first birds. Aviali is where we find our friend Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is a proto-bird, also referred to as a stem group bird. Its lineage shows most of the bird characteristics, but it did not evolve into modern birds, instead dying out in Aviali. The next clade, Pygostilia, developed fused tails and beaks, which further became ornithothoraces, or birds with a keeled sternum. This keeled sternum provides an anchor for the bird's wing muscles to attach, enabling efficient flight. Then came ornithuromorphs, leading to ornithory. This is the last divergence in our story. Hesperornithoforms and ichthyornis both had beaks and sharp teeth. Neornithes, our modern birds, did not. So what do we consider to be avian versus non-avian dinosaurs? Well, avian dinosaurs are birds, and if scientific consensus calls aviali birds, then dinosaurs that don't belong to aviali are non-avian. So Archaeopteryx is an avian dinosaur, as are modern birds, yet Velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus, and others are non-avian dinosaurs. 
In a past video of mine, I made the statement that dinosaurs came from non-avian dinosaurs, and there was some discussion in my comment section as to whether that was a factually correct statement, so we can clear it up here. On the cladogram, the dinosaurs that led up to birds were non-avian until they evolved into avially, in which they became avian birds. Avian and non-avian are not cladistic terms. That is to say, while it is technically true that avian dinosaurs came from non-avian dinosaurs, it is not the most concise way to characterize the evolution of birds. So while I wasn't wrong, I should have used different wording. But at the end of the day, whatever. So with all of this in mind, are there some birds that are more dinosaur than others? You may have seen this video of a cassowary quickly approaching a person filming it on a beach, invoking primal fear in that person and everyone watching the video. Surely that creature has to be more of a dinosaur than a little finch. Well, let's circle back to the idea of primitive versus modern birds. Primitive birds like Hesperornis, Confuciusornis, and Archaeopteryx are all extinct, leaving us with Neornithes, or modern birds. Modern birds all share common ancestors that diverge from the primitive birds in the Cretaceous era. Some birds like the cassowary may look more like a stereotypical dinosaur, but they all evolved from the surviving birds of the Cretaceous extinction event. Therefore, modern birds are all equally related to non-avian dinosaurs. Thank you, heck, for keeping me sane through the cladistics. I hope y'all learned as much as we did making this video. I suppose I do have a primitive bird fossil on my arm, and I can confidently assert that anyone with an Eornithene bird inked into their skin has a dinosaur tattoo. And if anyone asks about my tattoo, I can refer them to this video if they manage to maintain their attention through my monologue. What I can say is that I love that tattoo more than the day I got it. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.